For the next 10 minutes, explore a mystery beneath the streets of Brooklyn that has only recently come to light. For over a hundred years, billions of cars and pedestrians traveled along this busy Brooklyn street, never realizing they were moving over buried history. Underneath is the world's oldest subway, buried and forgotten, until a 19-year-old college student rediscovered the Atlantic Avenue Tunnel. Bob Diamond was listening to a radio show in December of 1979, when an announcer mentioned rumors of a tunnel under the street. He began a seven-month search, wading through dozens of documents and history books, and rummaging through files at Borough Hall. He was not the first one to try to find this piece of history. A task force from a large Brooklyn newspaper, the police, and dozens of curious people had failed in their attempts to find the tunnel, but Diamond was not, not discouraged. People who were so-called experts told me that I shouldn't waste my time because the tunnel was destroyed a hundred years ago, or that it never really existed in the first place, or that it was flooded with 15 feet of water and had nine-foot-long men-eating rats in it. The more they told me these ridiculous th stories, the more I was convinced that there actually was something to this. A little blue dot on some blueprints finally clued him into an entry point. The dot indicated a manhole cover that was different from any cover for miles. With the help of the water company and Brooklyn Union Gas, Diamond went to Atlantic Avenue to investigate. And they picked up the manhole, and there was just a four-foot drop, and there was dirt fill underneath, so it didn't look like anything was under there. So I went down there, and stood on top of the dirt fill, and the top part of my body was protruding out onto the street. So I happened to move my feet around, and I noticed that there was a gap. So I squeezed down inside and found there was a space of about 18 inches between the top of the dirt and the inside of the roof of the tunnel. Digging with his bare hands, Diamond finally reached a concrete bulkhead. He removed dozens of cobblestones and bricks and broke through. Did you know well, it was like Raiders of the Lost Ark when they opened up the Well of Souls and that blast of air came out from underneath. And we pointed a flashlight in through the opening and you couldn't see anything at all. It was just a completely dark void with no sound in it. Diamond's discovery was not just a personal milestone, it had historical value. The Atlantic Avenue Tunnel was something that um, revealed, if it were really there, something about the, the life and the attitudes and the point of view and the political situation in Brooklyn in the middle of the 19th century. And it revealed it not just by words in a book, but it revealed it by its actual presence. The tunnel was built 143 years ago after a series of severe rail accidents forced a half-mile section of the Long Island Railroad to move underground. 800 Irishmen began building the tunnel using the cut and cover method for the first time in rail history. This system involved digging a deep hole in the street and covering it with a roof. Their technique became the forerunner of the subway system, but there were problems. Halfway through the work, the railroad wanted the tunnel to be completed in only four months, so they hired an English foreman to come down and tell the men they had the honor of working on Sundays as well. And at this point, one of the men pulled a derringer out of his boot and shot the foreman in the head, and they chopped his body up into pieces to get rid of the evidence. But the death of the foreman did not halt construction. The tunnel was completed in seven months and was part of the Long Island Railroad line that ran all the way from Boston to the Brooklyn waterfront where commuters would continue by ferry to Manhattan. The tunnel was used for only 17 years. Then it was destroyed by corrupt businessmen and a politician. The Litchfield brothers, owners of Litchfield Mansion in Prospect Park, wanted to build a copy of the Champs-Élysées along Atlantic Avenue, but the locomotives chugging down the street were in the way, so they decided to get rid of the railroad. The plan began to come together when they enlisted the support of Hugh McLaughlin, who was the political boss of Brooklyn at the time, who used his influence in the state legislature to pass a law in 1859 called the Tunnel Act, which said that tunnels and steam locomotives in the city of Brooklyn are a public nuisance, and the adjacent property owners have to pay Mr. Litchfield $130,000 to destroy the tunnel and eliminate the railroad nuisance. Litchfield collected the money from nearby homeowners. If they couldn't pay, he confiscated their land. But instead of destroying the tunnel, Litchfield put the money in his pocket. He sealed off the approach ramps, capped off the ventilation ducts, and had three commissioners verify that the tunnel had been destroyed. Instead of transforming the area into a Champs-Élysées, it ended up a slum. The Litchfields abandoned their plans after a series of death threats. 
the destruction of the railroad ruined local business and devalued property. A few years later, while most thought the tunnel was destroyed, a local bar owner discovered the tunnel and put it to use. According to the police records, he had a still right here in this little crater. And the still had a pipeline that came out of it and a hand-driven pump. And the pipeline went out to the back room of his bar, which, is about, which would have been about 250 feet from where we are now. And the pipe ended at a cold water faucet in his back room. When you turned the cold water faucet on, Jim would come out. And after a while, the police found out about it and they came down and broke up the bottles and took the still away as evidence. Again, they closed the tunnel, but that didn't keep people out. During World War I, workers from the Bureau of Highways were convinced that German spies were hiding beneath the street. Not knowing if the tunnel existed or where an entrance was, they dug through the street until they broke through a small section of the roof. They didn't find any spies, but they left their mark in a form still popular in the subway today. Old shoes, some rusty wheelbarrows, Tools, tracks, clamshells, and a beef bone are some other artifacts Diamond found. While the street above has changed in the last century, the tunnel remains as it did over a hundred years ago. It's completely silent, and as Walt Whitman put it, 120 years ago, it's as silent and damp as the grave, and people who don't appreciate their lives on the outside should be forced to live here for a few days. The half-mile tunnel is 21 feet wide and 17 feet high. It's always about 65 degrees because the tunnel is more than four feet below the surface. The walls are six and a half feet thick and the roof is two feet thick with a six-layer brick arch. These walls may cover one of the tunnel's greatest treasures. There's an extremely good probability that this particular locomotive is sitting behind that bulkhead wall only about 75 feet behind us, might be the oldest locomotive in the United States in its original condition. A missing section of the roof in the structure behind the wall has prevented Diamond from breaking through to find the locomotive. He hopes to eventually get to it by digging down through the street. Discovering the tunnel lay new tracks in Bob Diamond's life. He has dedicated the past eight years to revitalizing the tunnel. His vision is to reopen the area as a light rail system and as a museum. His goal is to reopen the tunnel and extend the route by connecting it to tracks that would run along the streets of Brooklyn. He envisions a light rail system that would run from his tunnel to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, the Brooklyn Museum, Grand Army Plaza, and the entire downtown Brooklyn business area. City officials support the project. Any light rail project or any form of mass transportation um, in downtown Brooklyn that would achieve getting people out of their cars um, and still move people efficiently throughout downtown Brooklyn to uh, schools, to businesses and so on and so forth, to their place of work, would certainly help Brooklyn in terms of its transportation mobility and therefore commerce and in terms of its uh, air quality. Desmond believes a light rail system in New York would be used mostly by midday travelers and will be very expensive to build. He is unsure how far the project will go. As a novelty, it's a nice thing. Um, it might make Brooklyn a more attractive place. Um, it might be good for Brooklyn's, uh, downtown Brooklyn's image. Um, but clearly, you want to go beyond novelty to solve transportation problems. Diamond also hopes to fill half the tunnel with exhibits on the history of Brooklyn. An ancient trolley car would transport tourists through the museum. It would be wonderful to find a modest way in which to return access to the tunnel uh, to people who live uh, a century, a century and a half after it had been built. Um, the way the, uh, the unlikely attraction of the sewers in Paris are, uh, are returned to 20th century curiosity seekers like myself. The process of restoring the tunnel is long and complicated. Many critics say the plans will never materialize, but Diamond is determined to carry out his ideas. It was a lot easier a century ago when the tunnel was completed in just seven months by 800 men paid a maximum of 83 cents a day. It will take more than a decade and over $15 million to fulfill Bob Diamond's dream today.